the first thing I want to talk about is what your actual objective is, right? Um, so when I speak to most students or when we, you know, as in discussing with CTA students, your objective for the year and for CTA kind of comes down to something along the lines of, I need to know my stuff. <laughs> um, I need to know my stuff. Like I need to know my tax, my manic, my auditing. I need to know my stuff. And so we go back to, and we study theory and we go back to the stuff and we do an analysis of questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Cause I need to know my stuff. Like the better I know my stuff, the better I'll do in, in my exam. So we kind of feel like if I know my stuff, then by default, I'm going to pass. Okay. If I know my stuff, I will pass. So we focus on knowing our stuff. In reality, for those of us, you know, who have any kind of experience with this, that is actually not the truth. If you think about how many times you look at questions and solutions, where you look at the solution and you go, but I know that, I know that. Oh yeah, okay, I know that, I know that. But you're not getting the marks for them. You'll realize that knowing your stuff is not enough. Knowing your stuff doesn't actually get you automatically to a pass because you can recite deferred tax inside and out and still not get the marks for it. Because there's a whole bunch of other stuff that impacts you. The fact that you've got to do all of that in a very limited amount of time. The fact that you're doing it for a question that you've never seen before. The fact that you're doing that when you only have the case study and you get the required after the reading time. All these other things impact whether or not you're going to pass that go way beyond I know deferred tax. So I want to say this particular statement, you've got to kick out your vocabulary, okay? You, your objective for CTA is not to know your stuff. Your objective for CTA is to get 50% of the marks. That's your objective, okay? And, and perhaps for some of us, we need something slightly higher because of our year marks. <laughs> I'm not going to ignore that for now. So your objective is to get 50% of the marks. Now, it feels a little bit subtle and it feels a little like what's the actual difference. There's a huge, huge difference here. So this for you, I want this on a post-it note on your wall. And every time you start a question, every time you study, every time you do anything, you go back to my objective here is that I need to get 50% of the marks. It's not about knowing deferred tax. It's about getting 50% of the marks on a deferred tax question. It's not about knowing uh, substantive procedures. It's about getting 50% of the marks for a substantive procedure question. And that changes your approach entirely, or it should, it will, as we go, as we go through this. And all your lecturers talk a lot about exam technique. Okay, and we're like, yeah, 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 exam technique, exam technique, exam technique. And, and that's fantastic. We think, we kind of think we know what it is, um, and that's fine. But what ends up happening is that we still end up going back to theory, <laughs> you know, we like your exam technique will come. So we kind of go, I must know my stuff. I must go through all the theory. And then once I'm done with that, I will do questions because we kind of feel, and most students that I ask, if when I begin working with them and I say to them, what is the purpose of questions? Most students will say something along the lines of evaluate my knowledge. Okay. Somehow in our learning and in the years that we've been studying, we've been taught or brainwashed or not really taught um, what learning actually is, right? So we kind of believe that the way to learn is to absorb and gather a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of information. And then once we are like word perfect with this knowledge and this information, then we apply it and we try to do something with it. And that application is about evaluating whether or not you know all of the stuff. And so therefore it makes sense that it only comes at the end. Okay. In reality, your questions are not about evaluating your knowledge. Your questions are about building the skill of problem solving. Okay, so your questions are about saying, if I give you, let me move my screen a little bit, if I give you this particular problem, uh, what can you do with it? If I give you a problem you've never seen before, what are you able to do with this? And I, I use a really stupid example um, for, my, for my undergrad students um, where I say, you know, if, if, if you know how to make coffee, 
then you know, by by a set of instructions, you know, number one, get a mug out the get a mug out the cupboard, and uh, if you can learn a set of instructions about how to make coffee off by heart, does that necessarily mean that the very first cup of coffee you make is going to be fantastic? Especially, you know, if it's like he has a really fancy coffee machine, he has a set of instructions: go make coffee. It's very unlikely that your first cup of coffee is going to be absolutely amazing because there's certain weird little things, little balances of how exactly things work, et cetera, et cetera. Fine. Also, if you know how to make coffee in your kitchen, does it mean that that's the only place that you can make coffee? For, for us, okay, I'm a bit of a coffee addict. Um, if I put you in someone else's kitchen, will you still be able to make coffee? That's problem solving. Maybe that person's got a different coffee machine to you. Maybe they only have a kettle. Maybe they've got some fancy stuff. Whatever the case is, your, your problem would be, uh, I know how to make coffee in my kitchen. I know the underlying concepts. I know that I need hot water. I know that I need some kind of coffee powder, you know, pods, whatever the case is, beans, no, no, no. And I know that I need like milk and I need a mug. I need something to put it in. I need something to stir it with. You know that if you can't find a teaspoon in your kitchen, you use a fork. <laughs> you know? Because if I need to stir something, I stir it. You know, if I need a fork to stir it, I'll stir it. But if you just have that set of instructions, you won't know I'll, whatever I need to do to stir the coffee, I'll, you know, I'll do it. That's the difference between learning something off the heart and problem solving. In an exam, it's like, shoving you into a completely foreign kitchen that you've never seen before and saying, here, go make coffee with, you know, this really fancy stable art coffee machine you've never used before. Um, let's see how you do. And there's a good possibility that you're only kind of going to get it half right. You know, you might get to the point where you go, I actually don't know how to use the coffee machine, but what I've done is I've laid out the mug and I've kind of got the beans, I've got the sugar, I've got the milk and I've got hot water, but I really don't know what to do with that is. There's a good possibility you may still so you may still pass the problem solving without actually having a full happy cup of coffee in front of you that anybody would want to drink. And that's something that we don't think about because as perfectionists, we feel like we haven't done a job properly unless it's finished. So for us, finished is really important. Okay. It, like rigidly important for us as perfectionists. Um, the concept of not finishing something kind of almost makes us twitch. Okay. This is a big problem which is why we can't move on we can't move on when time is up we can't leave something alone we can't stop studying theory because we're not finished so finished is really important for us and right being right is absolutely crucial for us we've got to be right where you know the idea of being mostly right or half right for us is like you may as well just not bother <laughs> we don't compromise on quality like we don't do that and unfortunately for our studying, this is going to trip us up. The fact that we insist on finishing means that you'll do one question in the exam and not the next question and you're going to fail. The fact that we feel like we have to be right means that you will spend uh, you know, months on the theory and never actually get to a question because like, I have to know my stuff before I do anything. Okay? So questions are about building the skill of problem solving and they should be done from day one. The very, very first thing we do when we pick up or when we start CTA should be, what do I know right now? What am I capable of doing? And I'm, even I'm using the word, the wrong word. What am I capable of doing right now? For, for us in CTA, when you do CTA, you've just graduated. You've got like a whole degree. If you're not able to do a question on something, you know, even if you don't pass the question because your brains turn to porridge a little bit or whatever, if you're not able to attempt a question or start somewhere or do something, then you really should mail your degree back to, you know, back to the university and go, thanks, that was useless. If you start CTA going like blank slate, I know nothing, I can't do anything, um, I'm going to start from scratch, you may as well mail your degree back, you know, back to your university. And this is where most of us start, you know, because they're like not comfortable with the stuff. Um, and only when I'm comfortable with the stuff am I going to attempt something. So that's really tricky. So the beginning should be, what am I able to do right now? And then that gives me an indication of my gaps. And that gives me an indication of the areas of focus. Like, what do I need to focus on? And in some cases, it might be, there's many times I force students to do questions and they come back and they go, there were certain areas that I, I thought that I sucked at, but actually I was okay with those. And there were other areas that, 
you know, um, I thought I, I thought I had no idea what I was doing and I actually was okay with that. So this helps you prove the focus. It proves the gaps that you have that you need to do. So questions, questions are about building the skill of problem solving. It's about saying all the knowledge that I have is like having a toolbox. And I take that toolbox into the exam and in the exam, they give me a bunch of like, a you know, a bunch of equipment and a bunch of um, raw materials and I have to build something. And when I go into the exam, I don't know what they want me to build. I don't know what the materials are. I don't know what the problems are. I don't know what, all I know is that I've got my toolbox. And if I've got my toolbox, I should be able to build something, whatever they ask me, whether it's a little, you know, whether it's a Wendy house or a shed or a kennel or whatever that it is, stupid example, I know, I should be able to start somewhere. If I've got my toolbox, I should be able to build something.